As long as you keep it on the road, it feels pretty good though. I'm Jamie Balobo here at Team O'Neill Rally School. I'm an instructor. Today we're here with our Moza racing equipment and the new WRC EA Sports racing game. Just trying to get used to the new Moza, but get a good base setting for rallying and make this feel as realistic as possible. So playing around with Moza's pit house program to fine tune some of our settings as best as possible. All right, so this is the Moza Racing Pit House app is what they call it. This is where you can go in and make some fine adjustments for any of the Moza equipment. If you're on a PC, you can install and update all the drivers for your equipment through this app. Uh, there's really a lot you can do on here and it looks like even launch games, configure games straight through this. We're just going to start going through some of the settings for the WRC game. This is factory settings in here. You can go into the base itself and start out with um, a preset. You can pick the EA WRC. We're going to start with that. That's what we're at now. Um, you can see Game force feedback's 100%. This is all the force feedback options, um, the whole game itself. Now we can get into the actual wheel base and do some basic and advanced settings and how to tweak smaller adjustments, but the whole everything we're gonna keep at the moment 100%. Uh, so we're gonna hop on over here. We've got ourselves set up on the new WRC game using just the base Group N, Subaru, Impreza. Let's see how it goes. Just kind of testing out factory settings here. Five, four, three, so the steering wheel's two, got a mind of its own. It's shaking up a storm with all of that force feedback already. As I go over these little bumps, you can feel kind of the tenseness of this getting a little bit more as I compress. Oh, little we'll jump right there. You can feel it get light. All right, first corner breaking hard. Ooh, steering is a little tense there. A little handbrake. All right, ooh, kind of wanted to counter more than I'd like there. Getting into the, f oh, the steering just snapping into counter steers. That's not going to be smooth. Yeah, very snappy all over. Um, one thing when I'm driving my sim racing stuff is I like it to, to feel really realistic. I like to feel the road, but not the steering snapping out of my hands when I go to counter. So. With that being said, I'm not going to waste too much time. We're going to go back into our settings screen and we're going to start tweaking some of this and see if we can make it drive more like a realistic car. Um, so again, like I said, we'll keep that 100%. There are some bumps and braking forces, stuff like that. We still want to feel pretty well. To me, it's more the, I don't want to fight to turn into the corners or I don't want to fight to counter a certain amount versus it trying to throw the wheel. So that's where I'm trying to adjust some of this. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at like my basics, my steering angles, how much. Um, typically on rally games, I like to use 540 degrees. That's giving me a full, you know, almost a full wrap around but not quite um, in a real rally car or a you know low budget rally car you might have a couple turns of the steering wheel but typically you know one and a little bit is normal so close enough there um, road sensitivity this is going to be kind of that road feel you can make it more aggressive for right now let's stick to seven game force feedback intensity the wheel damper setting, we're going to mess with that a little bit. That's the one that I'm looking to play with some. That's going to help when I go for the quick counter steer. It's not going to let the steering base throw as much in there. It's going to let me do it. Um, so right now, factory, it's set at 20%. I like when I'm testing a real car, sim car, I just like to go kind of crazy and go wild all the way to an extreme, test something out and then dial it back once I feel what the extreme is. So I'm just gonna do that. Go ahead and hit resume here. Play a couple more corners and just see how things feel. So I can still feel all the little bumps in the, the suspension, that type of thing. But now the steering wheel less so wants to do its own thing and I'm a little bit more in control of it. 
It's not so snappy. It's just a smoother feel. I'm still feeling all the compressions, the jumps. When I break the weight on the nose, you can feel a little bit more forces on that steering when you go to spin the steering wheel side to side. It's a little bit harder to do when you're under the brakes and it's compressed, just like in a normal car. Big jump. Ease to the corner. So right now I'm able to drive it pretty good right there. It did counter a little bit more than what I would have. So it saved me, but again, it's the car driving, not me. Big jump. Oh, not listening to the notes. So now that I've got um, a little bit better feel there, I'm going to tweak some other things as well. All right, so wheel dampening helped come down just a little bit on that one. Um, but then the force feedback, uh, like I said, I'm really liking the bumps, the jumps, the braking, but it still is almost like it's trying to work a little harder than I'd like. So we're going to bring that down some um, and give that a go from there. Not going to adjust too much. We'll try that. All right, so even though I've turned that one down, I'm still feeling all those bumps and stuff. I didn't fully turn it down, um, but the steering's not taking as much effort. I don't need to fight it. It's, it's actually feeling pretty good right now. The big landing right there probably see if we rewind in the video a little bit of a shake on the steering pretty realistic as we compress pretty heavily off of the landing um, but as I'm going on the straight smooth stuff I don't feel like it would be hard to turn the wheel much which is what was happening before it was just very stiff straight line driving um, almost like a car that had no power steering and that's just not realistic even if you are rallying a car with no power steering once you get up to speed it's pretty easy to turn the wheel big jumps you can feel those landings and the steering pretty good and then when you get in the air too it, it almost gets like a free spinning feel there's no resistance at all on the the force feedback i mean as you'd expect when you're in the air there's nothing to grab so why be force feedback uh, so, feeling pretty good, but now that I've got better control of the steering aspect of this, the I'm doing the thinking of it, it's not trying to steer for me, I'm going to go ahead and get into pit house one more time here. And I'm going to actually turn up the road sensitivity now that I've got that steering how I like it, see if I can feel more of those bumps, the compressions, the braking, all of that type of stuff, the good info that I do want to know as a driver. Braking hard, turning in, pulling the old handbrake, little gas on the way out, we go. So still letting me do, let's say 80% of the steering slash thinking about steering, but there is a little bit of that assist from the, the mind of the, the wheelbase, you could say, where it's trying to give you that road feel. It's almost helping turn the car. I noticed the most during counter steering, um, just because like in a natural car, when you go to counter steer, the car wants the point where it needs to go. You know, if you get sliding and you let go of the wheel, which we shouldn't do, it will kind of point itself some naturally, um, but, I want to do the thinking myself. Now that we're starting to get that feeling pretty good, I'd say it's time to also try it in like a different car and make sure, uh, let's say like in a rear wheel drive car, the counter steers are feeling how they should and proper versus um, in a front wheel drive car or an all wheel drive car. So in a rear wheel drive car, Something that I like when I'm sim racing, right? Uh, I've talked a lot about it, is I don't want the steering doing too much of its thing. I want to do it. The rear wheel drive cars, I tend to set some of this stuff down even more. I want to be a little bit more light on my fingers and be flowing with my steering um, versus heavy on my steering and feeling so much of that road. With the rear wheel drive, you need to be a little quicker with this sometimes. Um, so I might 
bring us to a different car at this point and kind of try these settings on a rear wheel drive car and see if I'm still happy with the real feel of this. All right, so rear wheel drive, we'll just pick a group B rear wheel drive just because they're fun, got lots of power. So it'll give us a good proper feeling of rear wheel drive. Again, um, just kind of tweaking some settings if needed to get this to feel as much as possible like a real car. All right, so let's give a little sample and see how it feels. Brake test. Can feel the steering get a little heavier under braking. That's pretty normal. First hard corner out of the way right there. I didn't feel like I was fighting the steering too much. On the brake mid corner. See heavy brake, trail braking easing off. That's feeling pretty good. And a little bit more pressure than just, let's say, two fingertips to get it to steer through here. You can feel the grip. That's one thing I've always said with the, the impressive force feedback with some of these, especially the Moza. The big thing I noticed with sim driving and rear wheel drive, here's the big hard corner. Let's see if we can throw her sideways and get her. The counter steers are feeling pretty good. I find sometimes that these force feedbacks will actually over counter with rear wheel drive cars trying to just do their thing and help simulate but in the long run it just helps hinder sometimes ah, right there and now that i want to turn the wheel fast that was the situation i'd kind of been waiting for it just didn't let me get that spin in as quick as i wanted i could feel it started to spin quick and it almost like eh, slowed me down um, so I'm going to, I'm just going to cut that right out all the way again, kind of back to earlier, adjusting things by extremes just to figure out what it's doing. And then we can tweak it a little bit to find the happy spot. So by taking that dampening out, now it's reintroducing the same problem, which is why we took it or we put some of that dampening setting in earlier, which is the steering's getting a little twitchy. It's almost, it's trying to make some small adjustments for some of those bumps. Um, and what it's really doing is just making my steering very twitchy. So I'm kind of gripping up a little bit tighter on the steering to help smooth that out and therefore make it feel like the road. But in real world, I am gripping a little tight for a long racing endurance type of thing like stage rail. But it does feel good, I will not lie. Big jump, big hard hands. The landing could feel it. A bit of a high speed jump. And you can feel it when you land and the wheels turn a little bit too much too, how much it really bites and snaps your wrist, just like it would in real life. I'm feeling pretty happy with these settings right now. We might even try this in a front wheel drift car at some point and see how that feels. Bring that up just a little. Fine tuning. Let's reset us back to the track just because we're testing here. Try to smooth it out a little bit, get away from some of that shake, but also still be able to feel the road and do all the steering myself. That was pretty tidy. I like that. Ooh, big overhill, over crest right back there. I got pretty light. I could feel it. The steering was almost no resistance on it. Big braking, lots of resistance. Turning in, counter and go. Big gas, big gas. A little carried away. Kind of one last thing to test. I got the settings dialed in pretty good. I was liking how it felt with an all wheel drive car where I didn't need as much really big counter steers um, as let's say like a rear wheel drive and I was pretty happy with it. But then hopping in a rear wheel drive car, I noticed with the faster steering, the, the dampener settings weren't allowing me to steer as quick as I wanted. So a little bit of tweaking there. Uh, now still me doing all the steering, it's not too hard of a force feedback where I feel like the, 
base is kind of thinking for me and being ahead of me, um, but I can get everything feeling just right on the counter side of it. So now we're gonna try front wheel drive and see if it feels realistic. actually feels really good. I'm pretty happy with this right where it's at. Even right there where I got off the brakes a little bit early, got back in the gas, I could feel a little bit of rumble from the steering where I got some wheel spin. And then it got a little bit lighter friction wise on the steering. I would assume symbolizing that understeer kind of losing grip, kind of the opposite of like right here when I'm hard on the brakes and I can really feel that steering is tight. All right, I'm gonna call that pretty good right there. I like those settings. Let's go back at them settings and take a look, see where we kind of finalized everything. So going back to the basic settings, um, again, adjusting that maximum steering angle, it was somewhere, uh, I think it was right about there starting out, 300, 350 range. We're over here at 540. That's more realistic for, like I said, for rally driving. You could get all the way up to 720, um, really get some degrees going in that steering, very realistic car. Road sensitivity, it's rally. I love to feel the road. I like to feel every bump, every ditch I cut, all that stuff. I ended up cranking that up. Seven was where it was set at the beginning. I liked it cranked right up. Game force feedback intensity. I did turn this one down a little bit from that 100%, not to take away from the force feedback, but to get it a little bit more, I'm driving this, not that's driving the car. And then um, didn't really mess too much with the maximum speed, wheel speed, wheel spring strength in the end of the day. Played with them a little bit, but pretty much back to normal. This wheel damper is one of the settings that depending on the car you're in, you might wanna play with it. In the front wheel, rear wheels, I liked it pretty, pretty well right here, 15% was feeling good. In the all wheel drive cars, I did like it pretty high. I found it helped me um, not over counter or be too quick and snappy on the counter. It also felt like I was a little bit more planted in the grip. I kind of bunkered down most of the time. Um, maybe just how I drive an all wheel drive car in rally. I like to keep everything gripped up and bunkered down um, as I like to say. So wheel damper again, depending on the car, you might be slightly changing that. And then over here, um, pretty good kind of from the factory. I like everything to feel the same from the start speed to the end speed, so I didn't mess with this stuff. Wheel friction, I did actually bring up a little bit. It started at around 20%. I wanted to feel that gravel a little bit more. Um, and then natural inertia, that's kind of like once I start steering, does it want to keep going? I kept that 100% just to keep it normal uh actually no 150 percent. that's where it was at didn't really get too deep into any of this nonsense here pretty happy with all of this the brake curve is something that i am gonna play with right now because i have found from the get-go with this game that I break a little light. So as I do this and I can see how much I'm breaking, I notice the normal curvature, when I get to what I think is medium to pretty heavy is not as hard as I thought, versus that one's almost there and then I push a little more and I'm maxed. This one seems the best. It's really progressively going up there quick, I'm barely on it and then boom, we're maxed out. Um, I'd like right about there to be a little bit more, we're gonna mess with it. Let's bring all of them down a little bit. There we go, just like that. Pretty good jump when I first get on it and then a progressive boom as I go through. 
Yeah, let's try that. Can I already feel more brake bite just from when I initially start braking? Which when I first hopped on this game, I felt like I had to just about slam the brakes with this setup. And now, with a quick look at that graph, I was able to change the curve, the pressures needed to get full braking. I don't want to feel like I'm having to push the, the brake pedal through the firewall. That's just not realistic. Before on a fast section like this, if I would just try to drag a little bit of brake to keep just a slight bit of grip, keep it more stable, it felt like I wasn't doing anything. It wouldn't give me the results I was looking for. It was just still unstable until I really dragged a lot of brake. And then it was more slowing me down than it was keeping everything tight and smooth. So being able to adjust that is actually kind of cool. Right now I'm pretty happy. My, my light pressure is keeping everything pretty smooth and, I, and in a real car and, and the road I would be feeling it by the ride you know it would be shaking a bunch uh, on the sim side of it I'm feeling it through the vibrations in the steering so when we're in the very fast sections with lots of bumps and potholes and stuff like that the steering wheel is just constantly vibrating all right I'm liking how that's feeling let's keep going through some of these little tabs here we don't have any fancy heads up displays. We do have a shifter, but I'm not using it at the moment. We do have a knee brake. Oh, this is a cool setting. Key threshold. Let's adjust that so it starts working a lot earlier. And then, let's go back over here. Let's resume. Let me give a couple e-brake tests. Oh, don't lift. Oh, all right. The e-brake's on. The e-brake's not on. Hmm. We've adjusted that one a bit too much. All right. We need a little bit of room on that threshold, apparently, so that it doesn't think that I'm dragging an e-brake at all times. There we go. That's looking better. You can see the little light was on. As soon as I came back in there, it was locked up. So it's a pretty sensitive sensor there. But it won't. All right, back to it. So even now, let's see if I can get to a tight corner at some point. I know there's one coming up. This e-brake should kick in. Whoa, a lot sooner than it was before. Kind of getting away some of that free play almost, you know, if that was a mechanical e-brake, there might be a little bit of pull there where it's not doing anything. That setting's allowing me to make it engage sooner. But what you got to be careful of, and I'm trying to still decide, no, is, is it adjusting just where the grab point is or is it adjusting how hard it grabs there also and that's kind of something that i was playing with there um, because i know in this game you can adjust the strength of the e-brake also um, didn't seem to affect that changing that setting it was more about where it grabbed i had noticed earlier on um, it took quite a bit of pull before it fully got my rotation i thought it was just the game but I would say that that adjustment right there was a pretty quick, easy way of fixing that problem. Uh, so pretty happy with that. And that kind of concludes what we have for settings to play with on our Moza Pit.